Welcome back, friends. Steve here, KM9G. This is a continuation of our DMR journey series. In previous episodes, we have discussed why we want to do DMR. I mean, this is ham radio. Why do we want to do anything, right? Uh, what radio we want to get, all of them. How to get a uh, DMR ID and a Brandmeister ID. So that's all out of the way. And now we're going to take a look at hotspots and configure it for our Wi-Fi network, and then configure it for being able to be accessed by our radio. So stick around. Oh, do the subscribe thing. All right, this is the hotspot to get when you are just starting out unless you want to go big or go home. Buy once, cry once, as they say. This one um, is basically the same thing that you get in pieces parts form off of eBay that you have to solder together yourself. The difference is, is that this one has gone through an extra quality control step to make sure that when you receive the parts, they actually work. I'll have another video coming out in the future about the eBay hotspots and what you can do if you get one that doesn't work besides just return it. But for now, this is the easiest one to, to go through and I think what you're doing is you're, you're paying for the seller's time of putting it together, putting an image on it and getting it working. What you get with this is the MMDVM Pi hat, the OLED display, this super extendable antenna that you don't get with the other one. The SD card is pre-programmed with Pi Star and ready to go. Um, you get your power cable with it and some instructions printed on the box, which is nice. And then inside of the box, you get a nice printed out page of more instructions. And you get a USB to Ethernet adapter with some instructions printed and labeled onto that for how to set your radio up to work with this right out of the box and ready to roll. And it comes in a nice little um, sleeve. That's what we'll call that. We'll call that a sleeve. So getting it to work is relatively simple. Take the box and put it off to the side. Plug this part here in to the part marked power. It really kind of, I don't think it kind of matters all that much which one you put it into, but I always put it into the farthest one to the right. And then take this and plug it into a powered USB hub into a USB port on your computer. Um, real cool tip for what I do with this is I go over to my Wi-Fi router for my internet and it has a USB port that provides enough power to power this thing up and so this is sitting on top of my Wi-Fi router off in the, uh, the router communications area of the house, not the communications area of the ham shack, which would be the whole ham shack. And then let's go over to the computer and I will show you how to get this onto your Wi-Fi and then how to get this configured. Okay, so Hotspot Wi-Fi setup. Now that we got the hotspot out of the box and we have it plugged in, when you plug it in, it turns itself on. You're supposed to wait about two minutes, two minutes, two minutes. Um, and it will look around and determine that it doesn't know any of the Wi-Fi networks in the area because it's brand new and it doesn't know any of the Wi-Fi networks in the area. And then it will configure itself as its own Wi-Fi router for you to connect to for you to do this, uh, set up your own home Wi-Fi network setup. So behind me, I've got a diagram of what a normal setup looks like across the top and then what we're gonna do across the bottom and then where we're gonna go from there. So under normal circumstances, you have your own computer hooked up to your own Wi-Fi router, which is then hooked up to the internet, the ubiquitous globe picture of, an, of the internet. I could have done a cloud. I think cloud's been used too much. We gotta stop saying cloud. It's time for a paradigm shift. We're gonna go back to globes. Anyway, this is your normal setup. Laptop, Wi-Fi router, and internet. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to switch over temporarily by connecting to the Wi-Fi access point that your Raspberry Pi has set itself up as, which will not get you onto the internet, but will get you onto the Raspberry Pi so that you can configure it to get back up to your own Wi-Fi router. Are you with me? Are you confused? Rewind. Because it's really not terribly important, but I did feel like I wanted to explain that to you and get it out there. So it's out there now, and let's get on to making it happen. I am running on a Mac OS machine, and on Mac OS, you have a menu bar across the top with a Wi-Fi icon on it. And I'm going to click on the Wi-Fi icon, which you won't see because it's just right off the screen here. But you'll see the menu drop down with the Wi-Fi networks. And give it a minute. There it is. Pi Star Setup is the one that you want to pick. It might be called Pi Star. It might be called Pi Star Setup. It just depends on which version you have um, when it turns itself on, which version of the software is installed. So let's pick Pi Star Setup. The very first thing it's going to do is ask you for a user ID and password. We're going to type in Raspberry. And then we're going to join. And we have successfully joined. Once you have gotten joined, you can come up here and you can type in pi-star, which sometimes works, sometimes doesn't work. Usually it doesn't work for me. So instead of doing that, I type in 192.168.50.1, which is the IP address of the PyStar hotspot. And you're presented with the PyStar hotspot page. Okay, so you click on configuration and you scroll down to the wireless configuration section and you click configure Wi-Fi. And the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do, it doesn't really matter if you do it or not, but I do it because that's how I am. Change the Wi-Fi regulatory domain from Japan to US. This is a big list of all the country, the two letter country codes and it's in alphabetical order. So scroll down until you get to US or whatever your country happens to be. And then click scan for networks. And it's going to go out and look and see what all the different wireless networks are in the air around you at this moment. And it says it's supposed to take 10 seconds. Okay, so this is the wireless network at the Club Shack. And I hit select. And it wants to know the PSK, the pre-shared key or the wireless password. And I'm going to type that in by picking it from my saved list. And then I'm going to click Save and Connect. And it didn't remember my country code. I'm going to change the country code again because it didn't connect. I'm going to hit Save and Connect again. And it does this sometimes. I'm going to hit Refresh and see what happens there. Okay, so what happens when you reconfigure the Wi-Fi is every so often it doesn't take on the first go round. Just go through the process again, not a big deal. And it could be me being too impatient because of the slow Pi Zero, or it could be uh, any number of things. But all I did was go over to the unit, unplug it, and plug it back in, and it came back to life. Finding the IP address of the new unit on your network should be as easy as typing pi star into your browser and going straight to it. Again, that doesn't work for me. It might work for you. There are a couple of other methods of finding out where those things are. One of the easiest ways to find out what the IP addresses that are in use on your network are is to use an IP address scanner. Uh, this is Mac OS, and Mac OS is BSD based, which is kind of Unix based, kind of Linux based. They're kind of all command line based and have a way to install software from a package manager. Package manager for Mac OS is Homebrew, which you can get at brew.sh. Let's pull it up in a browser. Let's go to brew.sh. Homebrew. And if you take this command line right here and hit the copy icon next to it, it will change to a check mark to show that it copied itself to the clipboard. And then we go back to the terminal and we paste that into the terminal and run it. And basically what this will do is download the homebrew installer and start installing itself and ask you a couple of very 
basic questions along the way. I've already got it installed, so I can't do that for you right now. So I'll hit Control C to break out of that. And then what I can do is I can brew, install, and map, which is short for network map, because we name things very difficult in the Unix-like world. And it's gonna go through its whole process of doing all kinds of updating and whatnot, and Nmap's already installed for me. Um, so it should tell me that. Or it might tell me there's an update available. And it has told me that it is already installed. And map 7.80 underscore one is already installed. So the next thing you want to do is run nmap itself. nmap space dash s p. So I'm going to scan using the ping scan. I'm going to scan my network. I happen to know my IP address on my network, my IP range 192.168.200.1 slash 24 because it's a class C address space. And it is going to scan. And it comes back and it reports a bunch of different addresses that it found. The one that it has found first is the router, 192.168.200.1. The second one that it found is a machine called Hall Pass, which is this machine, 192.168.250. And the last one that it has found is the Pystar hotspot that I have renamed to W9WAR. And it is 192.168.200.92. Let's go back to our browser and look that up. Up here, 192.168.200.92. Hey, there it is. So that is how you figure out what the IP address is from the command line of your hotspot once it's all set up. All right, we got our hotspot figured out. We got our hotspot Wi-Fi configured. And we have to go in and configure Pystar inside of that hotspot over our Wi-Fi. See how I did that? Okay, so... I know that the IP address of my hotspot is 192.168.292, which is in the browser behind me, and rare and to go. So if I come over and click on configuration to make this my own, it'll go right into the configuration page because I've already logged in once before. If you haven't logged in, the default username is pi-star and the default password is raspberry. And you can change that on this page. All right, so this will tell you a couple of useful things, the host name of the hotspot and the version of software that you're using and what your hardware platform is and what your CPU load is and what your CPU temperature is. This one's running a tad bit hot, even though it's still in the green. And so I would wanna get some more airflow around it, maybe cool it off a little bit, um, but it's still green, so it's fine. The controller software for me is MMDVM host, and I'm going to run it in simplex mode. That was something I did not have to change. I did have to turn on DMR mode, and what I have seen is that each one of these boxes requires its own apply changes. So the hotspot that we have, most of this stuff is already configured. You don't have to worry about it. And you get down into this general configuration and you want to give your hotspot a host name. This is the host name that your hotspot will use on your network, wherever it happens to be, whatever network that happens to be. This is not anything that gets broadcast out beyond your own network. So this is local. You could call this farts if you wanted to, and it would be perfectly fine. Um, node call sign. This is the call sign that you would have on this node, W9WAR, is my club's call sign, and I'm sitting in my club shack using my club's PyStar setup to do this video for you. This is my club's DMR ID. Put your DMR ID and your call sign in those two spots. We have all standardized on 443.125 in my neighborhood, in my neck of the woods, because everybody around here um, will be able to take their radios to their house and key up on their own hotspots on the same frequency and then bring their radios to the club and key up here on the same frequency without having to change one setting or the other on either end. So we're all on 443.125. Coordinate this, whatever works best for you in your area. Make sure it's an open frequency in your area and you'll be good to go. Change your latitude and longitude um, as you see fit. I'm not worried about it too much because I'm just not worried about that. The town, this is the town where the club shack is, Milltown, Wisconsin. The country is USA. I did not change um, the URL on my hotspot, but I did change it here. I don't really know that it matters all that much. Let's see if it gives me a hover thing. URL used to access the dashboard. It does matter if you have a URL to give it. 
um, it will use that. This is this is totally wrong. I have to have a talk with the OM that set this up. Let's get rid of that. I don't have one. All right, so this is the URL. This is the URL that you would use to get to your hotspot. I don't have a URL set up for mine, so I just put in the IP address of the hotspot. The hotspot that we use has an STM32 DVM Raspberry Pi hat, so I picked that. Every so often it, it loses its mind and forgets its modem, and you have to put that back in. So make sure you know what this is. Uh, again, for me, it's an STM32 DVM MMDVM HS Raspberry Pi hat. And this node is set up to public so that it will allow anybody with a DMR ID to connect and talk through it over the internet. If you set it up to private, it will only allow a matching DMR ID to go through. APRS host changed this to something nearby. System time zone changed this to the appropriate time zone. Dashboard language changed this to your language, English US, and then click apply changes. It'll take a while to come back. Every so often on mine, it won't automatically come back and I just have to go back to the main page and then come back in here manually. So that's a thing. DMR master, BM Canada 3021. Um, pick one that's close to you. There are several all over the place. Um, sometimes the United States servers aren't too happy and I have to pick Canada because that's the next closest one to me. And that's what I pick and hit apply changes on that and all the rest of this stuff you can pretty much leave alone and it will be absolutely fine and that's how you get your iStar configured so the next thing we need to do is get the radio programmed um, to use this hotspot and our call id and all of our talk groups that we are interested in so stay tuned for that one thanks for being awesome